In order to discuss the division of radicals, I want to take a look at some simple examples as an introduction. So let's take a look at the square root of 10. So we know that 10 can't be simplified, but I do want to factor it just to kind of give you an example of what's going on. So you could factor it to 5 times 2, which then would be the square root of 5 times the square root of 2, and that would be equivalent to the square root of 10. And now, another way to take a look at the square root of 10 is you could say, well, that would be the same thing as 20 times 1 half. And if we're going to follow our product property, that means that we could rewrite that as the square root of 20 times the square root of 1 half. And we haven't taken a look at a lot of fractions, and that's kind of where this is leading, because the third way that you could take a look at the square root of 10 would be to say, well, that has to be then the square root of 20 divided by 2 instead of multiplied by 1 half. So it should follow that our properties can do the square root of 20 divided by the square root of 2. So all of this leads to the fact that when you have a fraction inside a radical, you can write it as a fraction of two different radicals instead. And that will be important to us as we work through our simplification. Let's take a look at this first example, where you have the square root of 36 over the square root of 9. And so as we take a look at that, the top can be done pretty simply. That's just 6, and the bottom is just 3, which then re would reduce to 2. And that would be your final answer. Pretty simple. You could have thought about this slightly differently. You could have said, well, I can use my property, which would then be the big square root of a fraction, so 36 over 9. And 36 over 9 itself inside there reduces to just 4. And then when you square root 4, you get 2 again. And so you see that your answers are the same no matter which method you use um, for your problem. Now that's a simple one where it reduces. As we look at our second example, it doesn't reduce. So when we have the square root of 12 over the square root of 5, that helps us because it can't reduce. So we simplify the square root of 12 by our common simplifying process. That would be 4 times 3. And then the bottom, that doesn't simplify at all. It's just going to be the square root of 5. And then you separate it out to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And that's still going to be over the square root of 5. And then you would end up with 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. And what we end up with here in the denominator is the square root, which is one last step we have to do for our rationalization. And so we have to rationalize that denominator, which means make it not irrational. And so the way we do that easiest is to multiply by the same thing. So square root of 5 on top and bottom, because that altogether is equal to 1. And when you multiply out your radicals here, you still have that 2 on top. But then you have the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, which is 15, and all over just 5 now because those square roots cancel. Nothing can reduce here left um, with what we have left, so your final answer is 2 square root of 15 all over 5. And so that's a couple different types of simplification. First, nothing reduces here with the 12 over 5, so you simplify them each individually because the top one does, and you need to rationalize the denominator to end up with your final answer. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example, where you have the square root of 108 divided by the square root of 32. And so of course, you could change this using the property we talked about into 108 over 32, uh, and then you might want to try to reduce it. However, it's not as nice as the previous problem where you could just reduce that fraction because 108 over 32 does not reduce nicely. So uh, we're going to choose a different approach where we're going to simplify each of the parts individually. So this would be the square root of 36 times the square root of 3 on top. And on bottom, what you're going to have is the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And so as you take a look at this, you see that you can have on top, you're going to have 6 times that square root of 3 still. That's going to be over 4 times the square root of 2. And as you take a look, you say, all right, well, now I've simplified the top and the bottom completely. And now you say, well, I can reduce the 6 over 4. So your final answer would be 3 square root of 3 over 2 square root of 2. That's not quite final because you still have to rationalize that denominator. In order to do so, what you need to do is you multiply by the square root of 2 on the bottom and on the top. You, only, you don't need to worry about this 2 up front. You only need to rationalize with the part that has the radical. So that's just the square root of 2 on top and bottom because that's equal to 1. So what you have on top is 3 times the square root of 6 all over 2 times 2 then because that's what square root of 2 times square root of 2 is. That's where that comes from. So then that would make our final answer equal to 3 times the square root of 6 all over 4.
The 3 and the 4 do not reduce at all, so that is it. As I mentioned earlier, you can go back to here where you have 108 divided by 32, and, and that does not divide out nicely into a nice number that you can do the square root of. However, you could choose to reduce that if you wanted to choose that method instead, where what we would end up with is the square root of a 27 divided by 8 if you reduced both 108 and 32 by 4. And this fraction would obviously be a little bit more simple to simplify than the original, and you could choose to go through all these steps with this instead. It doesn't really matter which method you choose. In, a, in, in either scenario, you're going to have to rationalize the denominator as we did here and uh, simplify both the radical and the numerator and the denominator. It's just if you want to reduce first to end up with 